welcome back to the studio. So we fired this piece of glass overnight. Let's see what we have. We're gonna open the kiln up. Ooh, look how pretty. Wow, so we didn't get a lot of white out of the powdered white, but we got some blue and we definitely got some of that pretty dichroic, that green dichroic, isn't that just awesome? And the blue is such a pretty color, nice pale sky blue. So I'm really pleased with that. Look at this beautiful edge quality. That's consistent with having two full layers of glass. And then this is just a little something something to make it a little special, not just plain blue. So I'm gonna bring this over here, lay it on the table. And now we're gonna decide, look at the shimmer on that. Isn't that fun? All right, we're gonna decide where to put the bird and the flower so that it doesn't hide. Ooh, I think I'm gonna put the, the bulk of the dichroic up there. And you know what we could actually do, which might be easier, is if we move this out of the way, we can put this on top of the pattern and see where the bird, like where I position the bird so that it hides the least amount of dichroic. So we can kind of test it. And you know, we don't have to put the bird and the flower back in the same orientation. We could do anything we want. We can make it so that we make sure we see as much of that dichroic as possible. I like that. Um, I also think I like the dichroic up here, almost like stardust coming down. So I think we're going to put the bird here. There we go. Tail here. The cute little beak right there. And then, you know, maybe, maybe I want to put the flower here. No, I guess we've got to put it there. All right, well, the flower's going to hide a little bit of this dichroic. Put the flower on top. And this piece over here. Now, these don't fit perfect, perfect, but that's okay. You know, it still fits pretty good. I'm pleased with it. Put this little over here. All right, there we go. All right, so I'm pretty pleased with the way that's looking. Fun stuff. So we're gonna pick this up, put it in the kiln. Oops, hopefully nothing moves. And we'll readjust if necessary when we get to the kiln. Place it in there. We're working on fiber paper here because I didn't, uh, don't wanna take the time to prime this shelf. I tuck these pieces, kind of adjust them a little bit. There we go, let's adjust the beak a little because this beak would be going sort of towards the center. There we are. All right, okay, so we've got this put back in there, looking great. We're gonna close the lid. I don't know, that beak looks a little funny. I think that's better. There we go. I'm gonna adjust the wings a little bit. You know, I could do this all day long adjusting, but you know, at some point you have to say, okay, let's close the lid and get that thing fired. So, got these things all kind of tweaked where I like them. Sorta, of, sorta, of. oops, now it's gonna move, I'm gonna bump everything. All right, okay. Take one more look, see what we got. All right, looking pretty good. Okay, we're gonna fire this to a tack fuse temperature. So those design elements will be stuck to the base glass, but I'll retain the texture and a little bit of relief so I get a little visual when the light reflects off those pieces. So we're gonna close this up. Fire that to a tack fuse temperature, and then we'll come back out and show you our results. Hey, welcome back to the studio. So we fired, refired the hummingbird, and now let's see what our results are. I'm pretty excited about opening this kiln. Here we are. All right, check that out. Ooh, lots of sparkle, lots of texture, lots of color. Very blue, but you know, I love blue, so that's okay, I love green. I separated the pieces a little bit so that we would actually have a bit of a outline around them where the background color would show through. And I thought that would be kind of a pretty effect as opposed to having them all tight. Now we have kind of this outline, this halo, which identifies each piece individually, which I really like. I like the green, it's kind of plain. I liked, notice how the blue has a direction and we followed that direction with our pattern pieces in order to accentuate, you know, and make that flower look a little more full. Same thing with the hummingbird. We used our glass with a text, not a texture, but a pattern to it, a direction to the flow of the grain. We use that in conjunction with or in combination with our pattern so that we get the most 
effective use out of that glass as possible. Now, the advantage of using that type of glass, a glass with a, um, a grain to it, is you can have fewer glass pieces because that gives you detail that you otherwise don't have to cut. Remember, the original design had like three pieces on this tail feather. I only did one because I have these, this nice uh, linear quality there inside the glass itself. Same thing with the flower. The blue pattern really accentuates the direction of that flower and how the inside goes. Now, this is a really simple piece. And it's, um, you know, I have to say, I have to admit, on the verge of corny. But, you know, everybody has to have a hummingbird, a corny little hummingbird in their yard or in their house or whatever. And it has a terrific amount of learning options here, you know, learning possibilities here. Because we learned that, you know, doing the two full layers, we get this beautiful edge quality. We learned about, you know, laying glass pattern pieces out in such a way that we benefit from the direction of the glass. We used uh, two different firings, a full fuse and then a tack fuse. Full fuse to get this beautiful edge quality and melt all those first elements in. Tack fuse to get a textural visual here where the light bounces off and reflects off the edges of those pieces, which is really beautiful. Then we introduced this dichroic glass. We added a little extra on the second firing, so we have a little bit of textural quality. And we have kind of a whimsical sense of movement there in the background. Now I added white and blue powder frit, which really did not show up. So that's one of the things with white and black frit. White, you have to really use a lot of it for it to show, so be careful when you do and you know, make sure you use a lot. Or maybe um, plan on firing more than one time so that you can build up that white to get the looks that you want. And then the same thing with black. Black always tends to look blurry around the edges. Like if I use black over a stencil, I never get a really crisp edge. So black and white powder for it are two materials you wanna practice with before you use them on something that's really important to you. So I love the way this came out. I decided we're not going to do anything other with this other than come over here and put it in this adorable little stand. Now we could put this on the back porch. We could put this, you know, um, outside in the garden, turn it where you guys can see it. Uh, we could put it any number of places, but I'm really pleased with the way it looks, pleased with it in the stand. So let's, um, let's go ahead and check this, take this outside and see what it looks like in the light. So I wanted to bring this piece outside to show you how spectacular it looks in the sunshine. Isn't it beautiful? My gosh so glittery and sparkly and you know sort of a monotone color combination we've got the blues and the greens but that's okay you know sometimes you uh condensing your color palette can make a stronger piece of art it really suggests that you as the artist have made real commitment to those colors and to that design so we started this project on the computer with the glass eye i showed you how to draw it show you how to design with the glass eye then we went out to the studio we cut up the pattern we cut the glass then we fired it one time to create the base layer then we uh, added our component pieces fired a second time to attack fuse temperature to get all this beautiful textural quality and all that bright color and this really nice definition around our individual pattern pieces. Firing these at a full fuse, they would have been a little um, flatter and they would have um, been a little closer together, which is beautiful in some projects. But in this project, I wanted to um, retain that textural quality and retain a little bit of uh, outlining around my pieces. So the lesson here is you can make a, a single project a variety of different ways and by firing it differently you get different effects. So very cool, very very powerful for you as a glass fused artist. So I hope you enjoyed learning how to make this piece. I had a great time sharing it with you. You can get the pattern free on my website so check out the website and the free patterns there. The patterns also in the video. And um, I hope you enjoyed it. I certainly enjoyed bringing it to you. Nikki helped you know, here with the filming. Thank you, Nikki. She's always a wonderful help and has great, um, great contributions to these videos that we share with you. So thanks for being here. Enjoyed hanging out with you today and in this video, even though it's been like a three-part thing. And um, I'd like to invite you to join my premium video membership. We have new videos coming out every month. There's three different levels, a lot of fun, a lot of perks. Uh, we're getting ready to have a, a monthly uh, plus and premium annual wine and cheese party in September. You could still be part of that if you join that membership. Then uh, monthly plus, we're doing some special things with those um, members also. And then the basic monthly, we've got a new video coming out for them all the time. So hope you can join. We'd love to have you. Uh, until next time. Happy fusing.